I want to understand money. So my question is, mm. what is money and how does money work? Mm. Economic textbooks say money is a medium of exchange. But, but I think is, you, you need to appreciate the profoundness of money. And uh, it reminds me of um, a conversation I had from Elon Musk. And he said, money is an exchange. And it's an exchange. Uh, let me just paraphrase it for him. Because uh, he put it in a, very, in a more complex way. But this is what he was saying. The rich folks see money as a medium or a tool to, go, to produce goods and services to solve human pain points. Mm. So, Elon Musk and the, the few people who are at the top there, they don't, they don't get excited to see their bank accounts with a huge balance. Because money is not an end in itself for them. When they see money, they ask themselves, what can I use this money to produce goods and services and solve a problem for humanity that will change people's lives mm. forever. Mm. That's one view of money. The other view of money is now the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> we see money as a tool or a medium to pay for our bills and to and our entertainment. You pay for your cable TV, eh? you go to, Af to watch AFCON. When you have money, you can spend. That's what many of us believe. We buy the goods and services produced by the rich. So <laughs> we use our money to pay the goods and services produced by the rich. <laughs> So, who has, the who has the correct perspective of money? Mm. This 1% rich folks have the correct perspective of money because money does not excite them. What excites them is solving human pain points. And when they solve human pain points, they produce even more money. <laughs> money chases them. Everybody is looking to give them money. But us who want to pay bills, money does not chase us. We chase money. Because the bills are chasing us. Hmm. So, from the perspective, I know you've given the Elon Musk analogy. Yes. But I know that you are, your mentor and your good friend was also a Kenyan billionaire. Yes. The late great. CK. Yes. Dr. Dr. CK. Dr. Chris Kirubi. Yes. Um, who we had the privilege with Iso yes. to come and shoot you. Hey, yes. We've come full circle. Eh? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I'd like to understand, was this his same mentality? Same mentality. Same mentality. Look at how many, how many companies was uh, Dr. CK Hako. involved? I, I, can't, I can't be able to name them, <laughs> all of them. It's mm. impossible. Because he, and you know, uh, every time I, you, you, I would ask him for money or you would ask him for money. He said, I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> but if you show him a good opportunity, he will find the money. So I, call, I, I normally call this kind of people hunters. Hmm. They, are, they operate with this philosophy. Show me the opportunity and I will find the money. Hmm. <laughs> they are hunters. They are constantly hunting for opportunities to produce, to impact. So, Dr. CK's legacy is well known. Tens of thousands of people that he employed. We are, cho we are his children. We are his byproduct. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Because uh, yes. he used his money to produce. Entertainment is a very small fraction. I spent, I traveled with him and... One of the one of my most memorable moments in my in my 
period at uh, Centum was 2004. One of my first assignments I was given was to write dividend checks. And the first dividend check that struck me was the Okrasi case uh, dividend check. I still remember it was 58 million shillings. 2004. 2004. <laughs> <laughs> the profoundness was this or that. I imagine this man could spend one million shilling every week mm. from the beginning of the year to the end of the year and still remain with change. <laughs> <laughs> from one dividend check from one company. And he had many. Passive income. Talk about making money while you sleep. Mm. So this money was coming was coming from production. It was coming from companies that were involved in doing big things. Hako is doing what it's doing. DHL is doing what it's doing. Centum doing what it's doing. Smart doing what it's doing. Eh? Capital and doing what it's doing. Buyer doing what it's doing. Other capital doing what it's doing. Production. So if you look at the bank account, uh, the bank account might look like just yours and mine. But is uh, it's a, it is not a representation of his wealth. The representation of his wealth is in the assets, in all these things mm. that are producing and are constantly growing. So his conversation every day was always with people who are running these businesses and solving problems, unlocking, uh, clearing the paths for them so that they can be able to grow their business. And they grow their businesses, they grow the cash flows. When they grow the cash flows, they pay better dividends. More money comes to him. More portfolio keeps growing. And they, as the portfolio is growing, more opportunities are coming. He's grabbing more opportunities. Mm. And it's a cycle. So how do you look at money? Money is a game. Money is a game. Money is not about uh, uh, going to the best uh, hotels, holidays, and all these things. Those are just byproducts. Money is a game. But the real power of money is in the impact that we, 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 we can generate on other people. Mm. How many employees do you, do you have? How many people can, how many families can say they draw their incomes from you, mm. from your ideas? Money is supposed to power these ideas. Money is supposed to power these production ideas. And you change the world. When you change, money starts, money just changes you, which chases you. So money is a, it's, money is, an, is, is something that is completely misunderstood because the focal point should never be money. The mm. focal point should be value, uh, value adding. The end game isn't money. The end game should never be money. The end game should be adding value. So these two things you need when you have money. You need production and need portfolio. The production produces cash flows. The cash flows go to the portfolio. The portfolio grows, uh, continues generating passive income. When new production opportunity comes, money leaves the portfolio, goes into new production. And then that also continue, continues producing, uh, 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 pumping new cash flows into the portfolio. So this portfolio is ever growing. Mm. You know, I'll tell you one thing that really sunk in me after Dr. C.K. passed on. Because I always ask myself, I used to ask myself, how does he run all these companies? How does Warren Buffett run all those companies? Mm. Do you know what I discovered? Rich folks don't run companies. They run their portfolios. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. CK always used to look at how much cash flow is coming from these companies mm. into his portfolio. Into his portfolio. So the companies that are not bringing cash flow to his portfolio, there is a problem. There is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so he will make a lot of calls there. <laughs> but the companies that are okay and producing cash flows, he'll he'll call and say, keep going. Mm. But what is he guarding? His portfolio. His portfolio. Warren Buffett does not run all those companies. It is management that runs all those companies. Mm. There is only one thing that concerns him. 
How do all those companies are shorted, how do they impact his portfolio? His portfolio. He's an allocator of capital. He does not run company. He's not even an, does not even consider himself an entrepreneur like you. <laughs> <laughs> he likes entrepreneurs like you because you produce cash flow for him. So he runs one business and that's why it is so simple. Dr. CK, you tell me something very interesting. Pius, follow the bee and you'll find the honey. <laughs> Do you know what he meant by that? Mm. Follow the cash flows. Mm. You'll find the best businesses. The best businesses always have the best cash flows. And you find those businesses with best cash flows, they're the best investments. Because <sighs> they build your portfolio. Because they build your portfolio. Mindset. Do you, what I'm hearing you say, generational wealth is transferring a portfolio. Because portfolios, the principle never decreases. Let me, let me put it differently for you. Uh-huh. Uh, you've almost gotten me to parting shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Esther, your children will never inherit city. Your children will never inherit all the businesses that you own. They will inherit your portfolio. Mm. Because they are not you. Mm. Mm. They, can, they cannot run city. They cannot run those institutions like you. And they, in fact, they will not even be interested. But what they will be interested in inheriting from you mm. is your portfolio that you have created out of those businesses, which is run by Nabo Capital. <laughs> which means also it will not be demanding their time. Mm. So it is the cash flow that comes from your portfolio that will be of interest to them as they pursue their own purposes, earthly assignments. Mm. Yeah? As they travel through the, the world, they will, they will, they, the best inheritance you can give your children is not assets, is passive income or cash flow. That's the best invest. That's the best inheritance you can ever leave to your children. Mm. Let the businesses be run by professionals. Let CTA be run by professionals. Let everything you get be run by people who have the same assignment as you or related to you, and are passionate and are have the expertise for it. Don't change your children to be you. So. The best inheritance you can ever leave behind to your children is passive income, not assets. And you know what happened? I've discovered because mm. I deal with all of these people, wealthy people. When you are asset poor and cash, uh, when you are asset rich and cash poor, mm. and you leave that as an inheritance, the first thing that your children do sell off is the to assets. Sell off the assets. Mm. Be like, what was dad thinking? You, and dad at the time could have been trying to think with the time. With the time. So at that time, this, for example, a land piece in the middle of nowhere or in his shags mm. was wonderful for him to leave to you because we're coming back here. That is a... You know, we must change our mindset from a mindset of poverty to a mindset of abundance. From a mindset of scarcity to a mind mindset of abundance. abundance. This thing of owning land that produces nothing is a poverty mentality. Mm. If you own land, the land is not adding to the portfolio. Yes, because what does economics say? Land is a factor of production. So if land is not involved in production, that's dead and dead uh, dead asset. So, 
even to you whether you are born 100 years ago is still the same principles and you're not you're not doing well mm. so the true barometer of a good portfolio is the cash flow it generates the true barometer of a good asset is the cash flow it generates in fact any asset that removes money from your pocket is not supposed to be called an asset it's, it's liability. called a liability so if you have a piece of land and you have to have security uh, gardeners who and it brings nothing into your pocket that is a liability <laughs> next question <laughs> <laughs> i'm loving it i'm loving it 